quickly move to the final uh, notes of this event. Uh, very happy because we're going to close uh, with a video from one of the leading uh, word intellectuals, the sociologist, Saxia Sassen, a very strong advocate of the what we're doing here tonight. There'll be a video by Saskia, a three-minute video. She might have been with us tonight if she could move quickly, fly from Mexico City. And then we'll tell you with Yanis what is it that we plan to do in the forthcoming months. And then we'll have a glass of wine together. To level movement to bring all the extraordinary initiatives that are happening in Europe together. Today, we live under an economy marked by a logic of extraction. Even finance is extractive. Traditional banking sold something it had, money, for an interest. It was also keen on having the sons and daughters make more money to make more loans. Today, finance, totally different. Finance sells something it does not have. And in selling what it does not have lies its danger. And it invades other sectors via extraordinarily complex instruments. It extracts, just like mining. And when it's done extracting, just like mining, it leaves destruction behind. The way we are measuring the economy, I think of it as a form of economic cleansing. Yes, just like ethnic cleansing, I mean it in a negative sense. There is too much left out, too many of the unemployed, too many of those who committed suicide when their little shop went bankrupt, too many of those who have simply become invisible. They have been expelled from all measures of that we have for the economy. If we actually measured everything that is happening in a country or in a continent, we would get a very different picture. One might ask, why are they so keen on saying, ah, Greece is back to 1.2% growth. Why? Why? Because the investors benefit from this. The investors need growth. The investors need. So what that economic cleansing does, it eliminates far too many negatives. Most people, increasingly, are going to be in that zone that is not counted. One real issue, one challenge we confront is that even as all of these expulsions are happening, there are ma many parts of our economy that look gloriously well. They look good. There is growth happening. Our cities are more beautiful than ever. But of course, that all rests on a lot of invisible expulsions. Second aspect, very quickly, what can we do? There is a lot that needs to be done. Let me pick up on one element, the importance of relocalizing as much as we can relocalize. Do we really need a multinational to get a cup of coffee? And mind you, Starbucks is moving into more and more European cities. We don't need Starbucks. We don't need all the other franchises. Out with all franchises. Every franchise takes something out of the community and moves it on to headquarters. Same thing, we all need a bank. We do not need an affiliate of a multinational financial firm because it also extracts. How about going back to rotating credit associations, to all kinds of localized events? This is clearly partial. But if we could begin to think about what are the knowledges that all the members of a community have. I know immigrant workers who are actually medical doctors, trained as medical doctors, but now are handling parking lots because of questions, you know, that if you are a doctor from a foreign country, etc. But the knowledge is there. Imagine if every one of our localities sort of had a track, a record of all the knowledges present in the members of their community. Imagine. A poor community has a medical doctor whom they can call on. That is sort of an image that is also part of the relocalizing. But this notion of relocalizing clearly is partial, but it is one item. In short, there is much work to be done.